As we continue our series today on strength for women, I would like to encourage you and speak with you about the matter of family. Family. Really and truly, there's nothing on earth quite like a warm, loving family to call your very own. I do understand that in our day and age, especially here in America, that we live in a time where the devil has made havoc of the home. Mothers and fathers divorce. Children are just cast aside, tossed aside. Such hurt, heartache, bitterness, hateful words, just destruction of the home and of the family. I want you to know that's not the will of God. The devil knows that God ordained the home, and that's why he fights against the home. But today I want to encourage you about your family. I don't know your home life and your home situation, but I do know this, that if you will purpose in your heart to be what God wants you to be at home, you'll find his blessings and favor. And I believe that you want your family to be blessed of God. Well, then you need to be the person who sets his heart or her heart to say, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ, and I'm going to honor God in my home, and I'm going to be the right kind of Christian in my home. I think the greatest place in all the world to live for Christ is at home. I think sometimes we get that backwards, don't we? We live or we put on the face, put on the show everywhere else except home. But really, we don't need to put on a show. We need to live for God at home. So let's talk a little bit about the home life. Now, I realize that I may be speaking with people of uh, different age ranges and different home situations. So I'm only going to touch base on just a few things, but I pray that the Lord will speak to our hearts. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. The Bible here speaks to young people, children who may be living at home. People who are living with mom and dad. Now, maybe you're not with mom and dad. Maybe you're just with mom. Or maybe you're just with dad. Or maybe your grandparents are raising you or someone else. But whoever it is that's raising you, I think you ought to consider them as your parents. And the Bible tells us that children, you need to obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right, Ephesians 6, 1. That means that whatever mom and dad say do, that's what you need to do. Now that means making some tough choices, because I know that it's not always easy to obey. It's not always easy to do what someone else says. You know, if you think of something so simple like clean your room, you know, they tell us that when we're little, clean your room. Well, the Bible says you need to obey. But when we get a little older, that gets more and more difficult, especially when mom and dad start saying, you're not going to go out with that person. You're not going to hang around those friends. You're not going to listen to that music. You're not going to watch those movies. You're not going to have a cell phone. You're not going to have Facebook. You're not going to do any of those things. If your mom and dad are saying those things, the Bible says you need to obey them. You may not understand it. You may not even like it. But I want you to know that if you'll be the right kind of Christian at home, God will bless you for that. Obey your parents. Something else he says, he takes it a little step further. He says, not only obey them, but in verse 2 of Ephesians 6, he says, honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. God says, honor thy father and mother. That means that when you obey them, you need to do it with the right attitude. You see, you can obey somebody and all the while be cursing them under your breath. You know, sometimes young people will do that. They'll obey. They'll do what they're told. But they'll say, I hate him. I hate her. I wish they were just dead. I wish they wouldn't even bother me. Or then they'll start rolling their eyes, you know, oh, that kind of thing. I want you to know that's not honoring your parents. Don't you get on Facebook and don't you get around your friends and poor mouth your mom and dad. Yes, your mom and dad may have done something wrong. Yes, your mom and dad may have made mistakes. But I want you to know that God Almighty says you need to honor your mother and father. Honor them. Speak well of them. Speak highly of them. Do not degrade them and treat them with love and kindness. Not because they deserve it. Because God said so. Not because they earned it, but because God said so. Your parents need your love and affection, and it's right to do it because God said so. All right, let's talk a little bit to, about, uh, to the women who may be married. You, you're no longer under the authority of your mom and dad. You are married. You are out on your own with your husband and your family. Well, I want you to know, ladies, the Bible says that wives are to obey and love their husbands. Now, I want you to understand that when we talk of loving your husband, that means that you are committed to him. You know, we hear people sometimes, they say, well, I fell out of love or I fell in love. Well, love's not something you fall into, like you kind of trip up and fall in and then you trip up and fall out of it. 
Love is a commitment. And oftentimes that commitment isn't 50-50. It's 100-0. Meaning that you're loving and doing your part and this other fellow, your husband, he's sorry he's not doing his part. But I want you to know you're honoring the Lord. You're trying to follow the Lord. Love your husbands. You stay committed. You may wake up some mornings and, and just don't feel like it. You don't feel like being married. You don't feel like putting up with this guy anymore. But love is a commitment. The Bible says to obey your husbands. Now that means that your husband has the authority. That doesn't mean that you're not important. That doesn't mean that you're not smart and intelligent. And it certainly doesn't mean that you're too stupid to make a decision. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that God has given your husband the role and responsibility to lead. And your task under God is to follow your husband and to compliment him. You help, you, you help your husband and you follow the Lord in doing so. Perhaps you have children. Then you need to love your children. The Bible says wives are to love their children. Young women love their children. That means you're committed to your children. That means you're not just going to toss them aside like they're nothing. That means that you are committed to them and their well-being and their upbringing. It means you're making decisions, you're making tough decisions at the home that's going to help your children be what they ought to be. It means oftentimes you have to tell your children no because they don't need everything they want. It means disciplining your children when they need it. It means teaching your children the things of God and praying for your children. It means bringing them alongside of you and teaching them who Jesus is and how Jesus loves them. It means loving your children. It means your children never have to go to bed at night wondering if mama's going to be there when they get up the next day. It means that mama has not abandoned her child and her children or her husband for some other man or just for a few temporary moments of pleasure. It means as hard as it is, as terrible as, as life can be, as much you work yourself to death it seems like, you're still there. Because you love your family. Because God said to. And you want to follow the Lord. Dear ladies, I want to encourage you about your family. Be the right kind of Christian at home. Your family needs you. And you follow God and honor God. And love your family and do what's right at the home. I want to encourage you to just hug on, hug on your family and love on them. And thank God for your family. While you've got them, thank God for them. May the Lord bless you today.